I'm Sarah Anderson with the Institute for Policy Studies, and I want to talk about one cost of war that I've done some research on, which is war profiteering. The Iraq War was the most privatized war in history, which created enormous uh, opportunities for lucrative profiteering among private companies. You know, in past wars, we had to worry about profiteering from companies that were making weapons or other military equipment. But in the Iraq War, private military contractors took on all kinds of roles that the military previously had done themselves. I'm talking about surveillance, uh, training, uh, providing food and health services, security. There were even private military contractors doing interrogations in Iraq. And uh, so what we did is we looked at CEO pay among these private military contractors, and we could only really get data on companies that are publicly held because private firms are not required to report this information. And so, for example, Eric Prince, the founder of uh, Blackwater, the biggest security uh, company involved in Iraq, uh, did not have to report this. And in fact, he was called to testify before a congressional committee and he was asked how much he was personally profiting from these taxpayer-funded contracts to do security uh, as part of the war, and he basically said it was none of their damn business. And so uh, this is a company that was involved in many scandals in Iraq, including uh, three of their guards are now in prison for their involvement in the killing of 17 civilians in Iraq. Uh, by the time they went on trial, of course, Eric Prince was long gone, and we'll never know how much money he made off of the Iraq war. As for the publicly held uh, firms, we looked at CEO pay for the four years leading up to 9-11, which is really when the war on terror began, and we compared that to the four years after 9-11 as, as we went into the war in Iraq. And what we found is that these 34 CEOs of publicly held uh, top contractors uh, saw their pay double uh, during these two periods on average. And that was completely off the charts compared to CEOs of other uh, U.S. companies. So they were clearly making a killing off of the war in Iraq. Um, a couple of the examples would be uh, David Lesser from uh, Halliburton, a company that was involved in a lot of scandals and fraud in Iraq, including um, contaminated uh, wastewater uh, that, that made uh, soldiers ill and, and so forth. Uh, in 20. 2005, so two years into the war, he made $27 million in just one year. Um, and he wasn't the highest paid among these military contractors. That would go to um, the head of United Technologies, uh, who made $200 million in the first four years after 9-11. And so uh, here we are looking at the cost of the war in terms of you know, so many millions of families who've lost uh, loved ones or have disabled family members communities that have been uh, destroyed, the ongoing violence, and yet the CEOs of these companies are continuing to enjoy all of the profits they've made off of the Iraq War. And I believe that unless we get rid of this profit motive for getting into wars and keeping wars going, we're going to continue to see more of this.